Hello and welcome back to the channel in 2022. Uh, in this week's video we're going to be talking about some of the aspects of Lola inspections uh, that we keep getting asked questions about as uh, so we're actually on site today doing some inspections so we're going to go through a few of the things that we look at. Thanks for watching and don't forget if you do like these videos then please do like and share them. So as I said in the uh, in the introduction, we do get a lot of questions about lower inspections um, that we carry out and what does it actually involve, is it a legal requirement and all that kind of information. Um, so I thought we'd just do a quick video as we're on site doing some inspections today um, on just some of the loose uh, equipment. So we have uh, different categories of equipment, um, what we determine as loose equipment, so things like shackles, steel wire ropes, webbing slings and then fixed equipment, so things like winches on the wall. Uh, different bits of equipment have different inspection schedules um, and different inspection uh, times. So we might be looking at an item every six months or we might be looking at an item every 12 months uh, depending on the type of item. Or we might have a written scheme uh, of examination where we can determine a different time period to be looking at that. So some of the common items that we see, things like webbing slings, uh, this is a bit of an unusual one uh, for our industry, um, nevertheless perfectly uh, acceptable for what it's been used for. Uh, shackles come in all sorts of different sizes and shapes so this is a bow shackle uh, two ton I believe uh, rated bow shackle um, so we inspect those differently obviously to the, the sling uh, and then one of the very common things that we have uh, steel wire ropes uh, normally with a hard eye on the end uh, with a thimbling which allows us to terminate it usually with the use of a shackle is uh, what is LOLA uh, and is it actually a requirement to do it. Uh, so LOLA are the lifting operation and lifting equipment regulations and it is a legal requirement that all lifting equipment is inspected prior to use. So as we said the LOLA regulations or lifting operations and lifting equipment regulations are actually a legal requirement. Um, so if you own any pieces of a lifting equipment then they must be legally inspected. Um, as I say, either every six months, every 12 months, or via a, uh, a schedule, a written scheme of examination. Um, so whilst we're doing inspections, uh, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we've got a well-lit area, a clean place where we can work, because uh, there's no point trying to inspect something if it's covered in mud or muck, which happens, uh, you know, our kit quite often gets used outside. Um, and we also need to make sure the lighting's good so we can see what we look at. Today is really good because we're working in a theatre, uh, so we've got an area all set up where the lighting's really good for us to do our inspections. So once we've found our nice, well-lit area uh, that we're going to do our inspections in, uh, and it's all nice and clean, then we need to get our uh, equipment out lay it all out so we can see what we've got uh, and then we're going to start the inspections. Now it's really important that this video isn't about how to do your own inspections, it's just a bit of an overview of what the sort of things that we look for uh, and what it actually involves because um, I know there's an awful lot of confusion from the questions that we get asked around uh, around Lola. Uh, so if we start first of all on this simple webbing sling, uh, so it's made up of uh, three components, so we've got two hard eyes on the end and we've got a fabric uh, webbing sling in the, uh, in the centre. So for this we need to uh, we need to be checking that there's no wear, damage, nicks, cooks uh, or gouges on any of the metal work uh, and then we need to be looking at the sling as well make sure that there's no cuts, no abrasions uh, on there that's going to impair its uh, ability to do the job that it's intended for. Uh, we also need to check its markings uh, so on this one uh, it should tell us what the safe working load is should have a unique identifying number on it so uh, it references back to all the inspection records and also the declaration of conformity from when it was made. Uh, it should have things like the safe working load on, uh, derating factors, uh, if we use a sling in certain ways then it derates it um, or it could actually improve uh, the rating um, depending on how it's been used, what the application is. Uh, so we need to make sure that that information is all on there. Uh, so that's a simple webbing sling. Uh, something like the shackle 
uh, this is used all over the place for lots and lots of different things. Again, we need to be checking uh, for nicks, cuts, cracks, uh, any gouges on there. We need to make sure that the shackle pin is the right pin for the actual shackle, uh, that it goes in and out easily. Uh, we tend to put them on a flat surface and just make sure that they uh, they don't rock, because if they rock, then it means that they've potentially been twisted in use. Uh, so again, lots of things to be looking at on the shackle. Uh, we also uh, need to make sure that the markings are correct on those as well. So one of the other items that we see loads of are steel wire ropes, uh, such as this one. Uh, so on these we need to check that the rope, that there's no damage to it, no major kinks, no snapped wires. Although interestingly you can have snapped wires in a rope, uh, depending on the type of rope and the construction, determines the number of wires that can be uh, can be damaged in there. Um, we're also going to be checking the hard eye. Um, things like what's the distance uh, of the dead end coming out of this feral crimp. Uh, is the uh, eye deformed? Um, does it fit snugly? I does it move around in there? Um, so there's loads of things again to be uh, to be testing on or inspecting. Sorry, on one of these uh, one of these ropes. Um, so they're the kind of things that we're looking for uh, when we're doing these inspections. Um, the other thing that's really important is around the reports and the record keeping. Uh, so within the lot of regulations, one of the regulations actually covers uh, the standard reports that you should receive. Uh, and it's, uh, it's your responsibility to make sure that you get those and that you keep those reports uh, in a safe place. So should somebody come and do an audit, they can see the reports. Uh, but equally, if there's ever an issue, then you can get the report out and you can prove that the piece of equipment has been inspected by a competent examiner. Uh, so we uh, are members of the uh, LEEA, the Lifting Equipment Engineers Association, and as part of that we do a lot of training courses with them, uh, and we have a team card um, which says that we, essentially we've done the training and that we're competent to inspect certain types of equipment. So for instance, I'm not competent to go and inspect a tower crane, but I'm competent to inspect all the equipment that we use within the theatre and live events industry. Um, so it's really important to understand that the people who are coming to do your inspections are actually competent to be doing the inspections that you're getting them to do. Uh, again, if there's ever an issue and uh, you have to prove that you've checked that competency, you need to make sure that you've got a way of being able to do that. Um, so hopefully that's answered quite a few of the questions that we do get around uh, Lola uh, and the inspections. Um, as ever, if you uh, have any comments, please do stick them in the comment section at the bottom. Uh, please do like these videos and share them. And until the next one, thanks for watching.